Hi, welcome. In this video, I'm going to go through problem 21. Um, problem 21 says, the line y equals 5 is a horizontal asymptote to the graph of which of the, vo the, which of the following functions? Okay, so, um, I'm going to skip A for a second, okay? Uh, but let's go to B. Clearly not. This B does not have a horizontal asymptote. Um, and by the way, remember, um, you have that uh, y equals a is a horizontal asymptote if the limit is x goes to um, infinity or negative infinity of the function um, f of x or y go is, is going to equal a. So if you take the limit as x goes to infinity or negative infinity and then you approach the value a, that's when you say y equals a is a horizontal asymptote. This is basically the calculus definition of uh, horizontal asymptote um, and so obviously if you take the limit as x as x goes to infinity or negative infinity um, along the line 5x you're going to go towards negative infinity when it's negative infinity into positive infinity when it's positive infinity therefore clearly um, B does not give you um, y equals 5 is a horizontal asymptote and if you do the same thing with C you're going to go towards 0 so zero is a horizontal, y equals zero is a horizontal asymptote in C, but not y equals five. And then in D, um, you're going to get, if you, set, if you send the limit as x goes to positive infinity, for instance, you'll see um, that you're going to approach five over negative one, which is negative five. So D is almost good, but it's um, the negative of what we want. So not quite close but not quite and then therefore by process of elimination if I am saving a but not saying that it's the correct answer which it's not a is wrong e has to be the correct answer and you could very easily check the dominant um, terms here and e are uh, the x squared terms so this is approximately for very large x going to be the same as considering the ratio of 20 x squared over 4 x squared and clearly the ratio of this tends towards five um, as these guys are going to balance out and they're again the most dominant terms from their respective numerator and denominator okay cool so and there are many other ways that you've learned how to do this and I in other videos like for instance in my 2003 solutions I show you other ways to do this so I think I'm not going to explain this anymore but let me explain why um, a isn't it but it's like very close so A is preying on that like famous limit, limit is x goes to zero, of um, sine x over um, x equaling one, right? So first of all, um, that wouldn't mean a horizontal asymptote because we said for a horizontal asymptote, you should consider the limit as x goes to positive or negative infinity or both, not when x goes to zero, right? So uh, for that alone, it would fail. But if the limit is x goes to zero were the case, then this would in fact equal five. Because look, it would, be, it would have to be the limit is x goes to zero of sine of five x over x. As we, don't, we won't know what that limit is until I make the argument five x the same as um, this guy, the denominator. I'm just gonna put a five there and to make up for the five I'm multiplying the denominator by, I'm gonna put a five in the numerator. And now I can make the substitution, for instance, the theta equals five x, and what I've got is the limit um, as x goes to zero means theta goes to zero also. So the limit is theta goes to zero of five times sine of theta over theta. And I could use this um, squeeze theorem result over here and claim that this is 5. So this is almost the right answer because the limit is 5. But the only problem is that it's the limit is x goes to 0 or theta goes to 0 in the second case after my substitution. And, and, or in both cases, in fact, and not the limit is x goes to or theta goes to positive or negative infinity. If, if it were um, as, po as theta or x goes to positive or negative infinity and we still got um, 5, then we would have two correct answer choices, A and E, but okay. All right, I'm beating a dead horse, you get it. Um, take care.